good evening everyone uh, as you know that we uh, from gacs mumbai chapter maharashtra chapter we do knowledge workshops every month and um, i think post the lockdowns we have moved on and we've learned to do the workshops not uh, um, uh, in real live but we have actually moved on to doing this workshop in virtual scenario so we've done some uh, amazing workshops um, in this lockdown period but there was a, a discussion going on that we should have some uh, on co curricular extra curricular activities so uh, this is one of the initiatives taken up nitin desai is a gacs maharashtra chapter member uh he is a very well known wildlife photographer uh so we took this opportunity to uh you know uh, uh learn from his experience and uh understand what is wildlife photography uh not only that but because we are doing this in the lockdown period uh nitin will also tell us about some things some type of photography that we could do while being in the lockdown in our you know home prim, home at our home or maybe in our compound premises without going out much um that's what we look forward to to formally introduce nitin uh, i invite appa saheb kale one of the chapter leaders uh, to introduce him uh, so that uh, post that we could uh, go into the session directly over to you appa saheb thank you purvesh welcome nitin uh, good evening to all it's my pleasure to introduce my very dear colleague nitin desai uh, incidentally nitin is a proud gss member and uh, he is my colleague we work together so i know him as a person and up to certain extent as a photographer purvesh has already given you background why we Uh, decided for this particular session, <clears throat> and uh, we thought we'll just come out of uh, COVID syndrome and and think about something which is really helpful for all of us and can give some stress relief from uh, day to day life. Before we start and before I introduce uh, Nitin in detail, I would like uh, all to please mute your uh, mic and microphone. so that there should not be any disturbance during the actual presentation and for better uh, reception you can also switch off your camera if if there's any bandwidth problem please feel free to ask your questions using the chat option we will discuss the same once nitin uh, finish uh, nitin will finish his presentation and purvesh myself jatin is also there uh, we will try to accord the maximum questions from you the session will run from 6:30 to 7:30 pm uh, in case it gets interrupted in between due to any technical reason please join the meeting again immediately so that we can start on time two things about nitin i think he is a chemical engineer and a management diploma holder by profession currently he is working as vice president in this concert in division of one of uh, leading insurance broking firm Nitin is an avid wildlife and nature photographer. He has been doing wildlife photography for, since last ten to twelve years. Nitin is very passionate for traveling and exploring new jungles. He has been living his passion and juggling between home jungle, home jungles, and extensive business travels all around the globe. He has visited most of the jungles of India, be it Kabini in south, Kadoba in west. Kaziranga in east or Jim Corbett in north. Ranthambore in Rajasthan is his favorite jungle. He's been very frequent to African continent also. <clears throat> Nitin has been teaching on field wildlife and nature photography in India and in Africa since a uh, couple of years. He loves to study about animal behavior and always tries to unfold nature's secrets through his work. i have experienced that number of times and then he has really answered some of my foolish questions 
macro photography is his uh, favorite genre of photography after wildlife his dream is to set up wildlife lodge near few jungles and help people to get closer to nature these are some uh, achievements for nitin his work has been featured in renowned publications like uh, savus uh, sanctuary asia and midday uh, a very well known uh, uh, newspaper uh, publication he is a regular contributor to many wildlife conservation uh, conservation trust and nature related publications by various ngos his photo photographs have been published in annual calendar and wildlife publications of uh, maharashtra forest department his photographs have been nominated and selected for number of photography competitions and have secured winning positions in few of them i think work is regularly displayed at many wildlife and conservation photography exhibitions the photograph right now on your screen is most popular photograph of nitin you must have seen good morning good evening messages with this particular photograph and it's widely circulated photograph uh, uh, of nitin uh, i think mean, i have seen number of times uh, in uh, various uh, publications as well as various communications so with this uh, i hand over this session to nitin uh, i hope you will enjoy the session if you have any specific uh, suggestions or uh, comments please do share in chat session just uh, before closing uh, gss is also coming up and just is actually has also started new era career guidance series and uh, we have planned around 6 very innovative sessions on every sunday at 5 pm uh, one of the most interesting session on parenting uh, is happening on coming sunday at 5 o'clock please do join that series and uh, take full advantage of school of excellence initiative by gss thank you over to you nitin thank you kalesha uh, let me just share the screen first can you unshare uh, kalesh of your screen yeah is the screen visible no sharing is not yet started yes all right the voice is little feeble can you just talk loudly is it better now yeah much better all right so uh, thank you kalesh sir and thank you the entire gcs team for this opportunity and thanks for a lovely introduction um, i'm not as big as he has portrayed uh, but little bit whatever i know about the photography i'll try to share with you people and uh, i i'm not going to talk about the rules or i'm not going to talk about the technicalities of it i'm just trying to tell you how you would enjoy the nature's nature photography once the lockdown is over i mean whenever you will go out probably if you follow some of these uh, uh, tips and tricks then then it would really enhance whatever uh, great work you are doing right now so when we uh, when we say nature photography it is typically there are uh, for essentially what we are going to cover is uh, what are what are different styles of photography then uh, we'll talk about how you can achieve best of the shots in the nature photography then there are certain rules certain guidelines certain essence and last but not the least uh, what is uh, gray scale photography followed by smartphone photography so when we say styles of photography or styles of more peculiarly nature photography it it predominantly falls into four different categories first is the landscape so whenever you shoot rivers uh, sunset sunrise uh, uh, mountains that comes into landscape wildlife falls uh, it has three sub categories firstly uh, some people are very passionate about the birding then uh, it is purely on the bird photography and some are like uh, some are more into mammals that is mammals and then the next part is macro where you you uh, take pictures of minute small small creatures like maybe reptiles snakes uh, uh, frogs uh, little insects ants that kind of stuff then two interesting photography aspects uh, in part of nature photography is astrophotography where you see uh, where you photograph all the stars and milky ways and everything 
and star tails and time lapse are again two interesting photography aspects where you kind of to, uh, take those moving star videos or or uh, you you intently uh, slow the motion of the movement of certain certain actions so when you when you see it in a time lapse form it it really uh, it's really very appealing so what we are going to focus is the first two three points i mean astrophotography and star tail is a, is a vast subject so i kept it aside let us try and see what uh the the wildlife photography is per se the essentially when you want to do wildlife or for, for that matter any kind of photography or any kind of work uh three p's are more more important first is the passion another one is planning and the the, the most important part of wildlife photography or a nature photography is patience if you have these three p's I, i'm sure you will you will succeed uh let's talk about the passion uh so i mean this is applicable for all kind of work what we do if anything what we do if we do without passion it is kind of tasteless it's it's no fun right but when you do something with passion you you forget the next p which is pain uh, which is basically the efforts and time invested in doing any kind of work and which will also leads to the next p which is positivity so what's passion have a look at this bird this is a very beautiful bird the name of the bird is a uh, red avadavat or red munia uh, typically this bird is brownish in color but in winters it it kind of gets plumage so plumage is basically the males change their colors males or females change their colors in winters which is typically their their mating time and interesting part of the 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 bird life or animal uh, world is in the males are beautiful in all, entire animal world and i mean about the other worlds or the humans we all know uh, but males tend to get beautiful colors like very very vibrant colors when it comes to the mating so female gets attracted to them uh, it's kind of the best genes which is which is what we see and and uh, they they uh, kind of mate and uh, form their nest uh, this 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 shot was taken in probably in 2016 or 17 winter uh there's a playground behind my my home and uh, these birds usually flock there and i i i used to go there i used to take photograph but i mean it, it was i every probably every weekend i used to go there but i never got a good shot i mean i got shots on the purchase i got shot as a group but that one one nice shot what we call it as a kick ass shot so i i never got that shot so so in that season probably every weekend every saturday every sunday i used to go and i had to spend four to five weekend before i could get this kind of uh, the photograph you know i mean that's called as persistence or or passion whatever you can say the next picture is very interesting picture this is this bird is called as a uh, great hornbill uh these uh, great hornbills are large birds which are basically they they feed on uh, small fruits or some insects or some uh small tree shoes or similar kind of uh, feeds uh, the interesting fact of these these birds is they are pretty committed birds so once they form a pair they'll they'll form they'll be with the pair uh, with the with a with a partner for life long so i i and this is my favorite bird if you ask me which is your favorite this this bird is it and for many years i i could not get a very good photograph of or a, a nice decent i could say a photograph of this bird uh, and one fine day my friend from coimbatore called call me and he said hey this bird has a nesting in valparai which is about 3 hours of drive why don't you come there i said okay fine so we planned in february uh, i went just for the single bird probably for a couple of shots i went all the way from bombay to coimbatore drove uh, went to valparai and uh, stayed there for two two nights to get this this bird click uh, what happens here with this bird is if you see the hollow of the tree uh, just right here on the top so the male stays out female stays inside the inside the hollow and it she uh, she hatches or she gives the eggs inside that hollow and then once she gives the eggs she kind of seals the whole whole bark so that uh, no predators or no no snakes could go in and and cause a harm to the chicks but it so happens that as she seals the entire bark uh, the only way she can rely on, on on feeding is the male so so the male comes at this nest uh, and the nest has a very small opening uh, to the point that the male can insert the the beak and pass on the fruit or whatever uh, food it has it has brought in and it depends on the chick size the the interval of the interval of the 
male coming to the nest uh, depends on the uh, fig tree whichever i mean whatever the closest tree is how can uh, how best he can find the food the interval can change from 1 hour 20 minutes 30 minutes anything so uh, so morning session we tried to for get this bird we couldn't get it uh, evening after 4 o'clock the bird start coming uh, the bird started coming to this nest you know and around 5 5:30ish uh, uh, probably it was second last uh, try of that bird to come to the nest and it, i i clearly remember it was month of march and uh, probably end of march and uh, typically in these time we have our appraisal numbers announced okay and it so happened that uh, the bird was flowing on uh, i mean the bird was, but didn't came for a good half an hour and when it came at the same moment my manager nikhil called me say that uh, nitin hey uh, i want to convey your numbers and now i was in dilemma so i mean if i lose this opportunity i had i mean i couldn't have got this shot because the next day morning my flight was so so with heavy heart i told nikhil nikhil look i came here to click the bird but i can't talk to you now i mean and i knew i mean the numbers are already settled so numbers can wait and i told him look uh, we can talk about this number later the bird is already on the on the on the perch or already on the nest i need to click this bird and uh, nikhil has been always supportive to me in in my photography so he he understood it he said okay fine we'll talk later then we got good 5 10 minutes of session for this bird we could click this bird and finally once once the bird flew away i i called up nikhil for the number and fortunately the numbers were also i mean they they were also good you know so that's what i'm saying pa- unless we have the passion to click that bird i mean you keep on going to particular scene unless you are satisfied with with that kind of shot or that kind of frame if you, if you keep on doing that you will excel into uh, what you're going to click the next important part is planning always plan or always anticipate what what uh, Uh, animals what kind of landscape you go, you may encounter when you when you be at the site be it a hillside or be it, be it any jungle so i mean know your stage we know your uh, know your place where you are going uh, think about the weather what kind of gears you need what kind of protection measures you need uh, clothing makes uh, more or most important part when you talk about uh, animal photography what you pack is also essential and most importantly the permits and the accesses so so this was i mean like this so when when you go when you go to the ranthambore so you know you're going to click uh, you may get lot of tigers lot of birds so accordingly you pack your pack, pack your uh, lenses accordingly you pack your gears most important part is weather always always see what is what is the weather where you're going to where you're going to go the point here is uh, we all know that uh, in mumbai uh, flamingos come in the month of uh, they, they start coming somewhere uh, from march and they would stay till in fact they are right now uh, at savri or and new bombay also and they are uh, they are in large numbers so if we don't plan i'll give you two examples of this so what happens with this bird is they they typically come to the new bombay site basis on the high tide or low tide so when there is high tide in savri there when there is a large amount of water the birds usually come to the new bombay site they'll fly to the new bombay site and then you'll get to see them you know in a large number i had many trips to that new bombay site until until i came to know that okay we have to really plan your visit based on the high tide or low tide and then only you will be able to get the get the nice picture so next point onward i started planning my visits i started planning my you know trips around that area basis on the high tide or low tide and then we could we could create a lot of beautiful pictures of those flamingos at times uh, the the nature can play adverse also and the, sometimes the nature can give you good results this is uh, a, a famous cheetah from uh, masai mara so it, i mean we were on the afternoon drive and it was pretty hot in the afternoon so we we didn't carry our or we didn't carry our rain covers or any rain protection for that matter and we didn't check our our uh, uh, the weather forecast also and it so happened that evening 5:30 6:30 there was a, i mean it started pouring heavily it was a heavy thunderstorm and and practically we didn't have any rain gear so whatever the towels we had whatever the uh, protection measures we had we could cover the lens and those got wet and and we had nothing and and this this female with her two cups she was playing uh she was playing in those in that range and with with a beautiful orange light coming in i mean i i couldn't i couldn't stop myself clicking i said okay it doesn't matter if it rains rains it spoils my camera spoils my camera it doesn't matter i took off my uh, sweatshirt uh, kind of wrapped my camera uh, leaned out of my vehicle 
and then then we started shooting i mean and then we got this 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 beautiful shot but not before i spoiled my camera and and my lens so i had, when i came back i really had to get it serviced but doesn't matter i mean this kind of shot you get once in a while and beautiful rain drops with with that orange light makes uh, every efforts you know uh, happy uh, i was talking about the clothings yeah i mean i would prefer if you come with this kind of clothings but uh, if not these I mean, that kind of preparation but at least uh, some some earthy colors or camouflage colors are always prepared when especially when you go for animal photography don't wear those flashy colors in the forest i mean those 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 clothing disturb the birds or animals rather so try and wear something like green or brownish color uh, shirt or you know uh, or uh, jacket that that helps you blend in the environment so you cause minimal disturbance to the to the species out there most importantly always watch what you pack and always always i mean i have learned this in a very hard way do not ever forget your battery and your memory cards uh, again when i was talking about flamingo uh, there is a place called big one which is about 2 hours drive from pune so we were there and uh, around uh, month of uh, february the flamingos were there in a in a great great number you know and uh, i want i specifically wanted flamingo flying shot against a sunset so so we went on a boat ride we we started uh, our our uh, uh, photography session at around 3 then it passed 4 5 and and somewhere around 4 4:30 my wife told me that don't exhaust your memory card and i was very confident i said okay doesn't matter i'm carrying six or seven memory cards so don't worry uh, and i i kept clicking i kept clicking and it so happened at 6 o'clock in the evening or 6 6:30 when the light was really orange and the sun was about to set this flamingos decided to fly and trust me the first i i tried to click it i couldn't even click one photograph because at that very moment my memory card was exhausted and i just and 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 we were four people in the boat and i was right in the front my memory cards were all there in my bags so if i would move then i would have spoiled shots for everyone so i just stayed there and i just looked at my wife and she she understood what happened and she i mean the typical look she gave me look i had told you fortunately we had two days uh, stay there so i could look at sunset and sunrise on the next day batteries yes uh, typically what we do is once we come from a session or once we come from uh, uh, uh any safari we keep the batteries on charging and then we may forget taking this battery next time when you go on the safari we were in in uh, tadoba uh, ours was the only jeep in that particular area at that time uh, we had beautiful sighting of a mother and three cubs and as you imagine you would have imagined i had kept my battery on charging i didn't have a spare battery how i carried my empty camera and i probably i had i think i had some i had one cell phone at that time with me so all i could click with the cell phone i if i had my camera trust me i mean that was a beautiful sight nice green background the the cubs and the mother are playing there's a water at one side i mean i still can't can't forget that kind of scene the other important things to pack is yes some energy bars i mean because sometimes the rides or sometimes your treks are too long so it's good to pack water battery bank some energy bars and always carry your id card you know and please inform someone where you are going uh, you typically in jungles you won't get networks you don't want to land up in a scene like the movie 127 hours where you are not traceable for for to uh, two days or three days i mean that's the last thing you want so always keep someone informed carry your id card carry your fully charged phone something some device which can have gps trackers and yes safari ticket and your air tickets are also important because it had happened that people have forgotten their safari tickets they come to the gate and the the officials won't allow them to enter in the forest because they didn't have those those uh, official safari tickets Uh, look at the hand position here you know this is this is for the composition and this you have seen in many many bollywood movies where they feature any any director or any any person who goes with the camera he makes that hand position and tries to visualize something i mean i earlier used to say that i mean that's kind of a show off but then i i researched about it i read about it so what that photographer or what that what that uh, director wants to do is he kind of makes that square you know uh, and he pre visualizes what he's going to shoot 
in in his frame and he what he want have, want to eliminate as a part of which is not required in that frame and what he wants to show it so when he makes that square he gets that feeling yeah okay i want to pan my camera from left to right this is the only portion i want to cover so so what i'm trying to tell you this i mean don't do this but in a similar way when you go to a scene don't start immediately shooting anything what is right in front of there take a pause feel the feel the setting visualize it think about your equipment think about your equipment's reach what best think about the light from which direction the light is coming and then then take a call yeah i understand at at times where where the animals or the birds are fast uh, you may not have time to do these kind of activities but it is still better uh, to take a chance and uh, you know do that because the shots what going to get it's, it's would be really really beautiful once you pre visualize it patience patience is the most important virtue a uh, little story about this bird this bird i was i had clicked in in the forest of yeur yeah very much in mumbai uh, this bird is called as oriental dwarf king fisher so this is a very super fast bird and it, it uh, i mean you can't if you see in, in your your eyes it, you just see a kind of orange bullet flying that's all what it, you can see when it when it has chicks it has a peculiar habit when it when it makes the nest uh, he would try to perch or i mean he would pause for 4 or 5 seconds before he enters in the in the nest so what why he does that is basically to see if there is no predators or there no no large bird of prey around it so that they know the place of the place of the nest and and his chicks can can get uh, uh, under danger but it has only 5 second window and basis on the basis on the size of the uh, chicks inside the nest the iteration of his travel i mean the, the the frequency of he coming to the bird he or she coming to the nest varies some if the chicks are very small uh, the feed size will be small probably the interval is 1 hour maybe 1 or 10 minutes as the chicks grow big the interval will get reduced it will go from 50 minutes 30 minutes 20 minutes at times 10 minute 10 minute when the chicks are pretty 20 22 days old so while i wanted to click this thing we were there from 6 am in the morning till 6 in the evening uh, and uh, the the bird was i mean it was an early stage of his nesting the bird was coming only after interval of 1 hour and we had window of only 5 seconds so imagine 12 chances of 5 seconds and 12 hours of uh, standing in the water and this they they typically breed in heavy monsoon and the, the nest is also near a water stream where it's a inside a deep ravine where the light is low so lot of lot of uncertain conditions and you have to stay put till it comes and give you that 5 second window to click that photo but once you once you master it and that's the amazing i mean look at the bird the, the, look at the colors look at the feed uh, the way look at the the light in his eye i mean all all efforts are are worth worth when when you get that kind of shot i mean you you always uh, forget the pain or the the effort what you have taken like i said earlier yes this is also again a classic example of patience uh, we were there in masai mara and it was our third day or fourth day of safari and in the morning at around 9 am we we got a news that uh, these these wildebeest or they call it ganu in a local language they start congregating uh, near the near the river so now they would start jumping but they won't jump like that you know at times they need to because their safety is in large number so at times a group of 100 will come then the group of 500 will come they congregate at times the, the group will be as large as uh, 5000 10000 so in the morning they start coming we rush to the side but the whole whole river bank was packed so we were far behind and then the 9 am 10 am 11 am and uh, they didn't they didn't cross they just waited there waited there waited there and everyone started i mean lost their patience and they they started moving around uh, we said no we wanted to see the crossing we stayed put there trust me we had our lunches we had breakfast i mean even the natural breaks all around this place 5:30 in the evening they started moving and we were at the best spot you know i mean all the vehicles later on they were struggling to get a to get a, get a spot and we were at the, such a beautiful spot that all of them crossed right in front of us we got amazing frames so that that is that is patience so you stay put if you want a, a good picture practice yeah uh, we we think that okay let's learn now and whenever we go for the next holiday let's try and click uh, take take photographs and see if we can remember that trust me we we don't remember that we won't remember that 
uh, one of my very good friend uh, aditya singh he he owns a lodge there uh, he is a wildlife photographer so whenever we go together or maybe he is in another vehicle and i am another vehicle if you are shooting the same tiger and we come back from the safari i always look at his camera and say boss how can you get a best shot i can't because and in spite of we both are standing at one place or so you know our, our zip position is perfectly same kind of identical cameras but still you got a better shot or a better composition so he always tells me so the thing you you guys are like those guys you know who come who only open their book when you come for the exam probably one hour before the exam and as i stay in ranthambore i have been studying 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 all my life so when i go to the safari i know what to do you guys don't practice at home you come here and expect to get good shot no you're not going to get it and i kind of agree so you don't have to actually wait for that day to come where you going to go on safari or when you go on on bird photography you know the objects around you are 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 enough for you to practice so whatever you learn i mean see a movement of a crow or a sparrow which is moving around your house is typically same as a as a exotic bird which is flying maybe a cat or a dog as a pet you have or you never have or your your remise you have keep on practicing their movements i mean they, they their their actions are not as as different or are, are as the from as very different from what you see an actions of a mammals in the jungle but you practice the art as you as you learn how they behave you know what kind of setting so when you actually go for the exam or when you actually go for the sessions trust me you're going to get very beautiful photographs yeah i would always show this uh, photograph when it comes for the practice this 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 little creature is called as fan throated lizard and the fan and the neck I mean, that is why it is called a beautiful fan uh, the spread of fan look at the spread of fan i mean it's it's tricolor fan and it looks very beautiful so so typically this guy will open the fan in two cases either he sees a female and he wants to attract it or he sees a rival male close to his female and he'll open the fan to scare him or show his dominance uh, if you want to click this photograph if you really see uh, you have to really go eye level or or very low level to to have the feel of the fan you know so what you do is you first you, i mean it's a difficult task to identify or find out this kind of camouflage subject so first you locate a male then you wait then you slowly approach is probably crawling on the ground and then you wait when he opens the fan it happens many times the moment you think that he's going to open his fan probably the female changes his position or the rival male changes his position and bang so you will not get his photograph so either you now find the female or try and find this male again and do whatever you had been doing for last half an hour so for this uh, i mean we started clicking this in the morning i i mean at the start we could understand the behavior of this this uh, this uh, lizard but yeah by the by the time of afternoon we could understand when he'll open what he does before opening the fan what direction he kind of moves after the opening the fan and then we could get this kind of this this shot i mean but not before uh, we had uh, bruises on our our elbows bruises on our knees and couple of uh, worn clothes because uh, the 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 rocky the patch is very rocky you know and you have to kind of do a military crawl and it it clearly it 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 creates a impact on your body but it's it's worth it's worth when you get this beautiful shot and it's it's really nice the way the way it has come out all right art of capturing so there are i mean if you if you go on web there are different rules so i mean people talk about rule of third people talk about uh, feeling the frame people talk about leading lines so i don't call them as a rules uh, because see photography is very subjective so let us not think them as rule let us think them as uh, guidelines so what are these guidelines let's quickly see one by one so first is a uh, rule of third uh, this is a kind of a grid or this is uh, when you shoot using your mobile phone uh, draw draw two parallel line vertically draw two parallel line horizontally and where this line intersects these are the power points where the the image creates an impact so whatever object whatever person you want to keep it try and keep the person the object the bird the mammal on those intersection your photograph will be beautiful it also helps in adding negative space to the to the frame so what the negative space is look at the bird the bird is looking towards the left uh, towards the left side if i would not have kept this empty space towards the left uh, then it would have been a very dull photograph so as the, there is a space on the left side 
and typically the eye of the bird so in in animal photography the eye plays an important role and for that matter in portrait also so try and keep your eye as close uh, the birds or the subject's eye as close as uh, that intersections so once you have that you kind of have a perfect picture also uh, why it is important to have a negative space is think about a, a nicely painted wall in your in your house you know you have done it uh, very good you you like it on the first day third second day third day but it's a plain white wall it after some days it's kind of you 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 find it kind of boring you know if you have a kid at home probably a month later he draws some circles around it that day onwards whenever you see that wall you don't see the beauty of the paint or whatever it is you always focus on that circles or or that stamp whatever that kid has done why it happens is basically human eye always look for imperfection in the frame so if you keep something symmetrical in the frame or something is not uh, something at the dead center uh, it would not be appealing something which is asymmetrical it helps in it helps in attracting the viewers attention so always always keep, uh, think about keeping your subject off center that that would help you in getting a good photograph and it applies to all uh, the the, uh, the bird what you see on the left is brown fish owl the bird what you see on the right is uh, Uh, asian paradise fly catcher and you don't have to imagine these grids these grids are always there in every camera you just have to go into setting and and switch it on in fact even in your mobile phone camera these grids are always there so i would advise you next time onwards when you take a picture always focus on this grids to to get a great photograph uh yeah uh, even here so here i have not kept the eye near the near the cross section because if you really see both of the cubs are in straight line you know i wanted to have that as a as a alignment rather than eye of the bird because if you would have kept eye the the other cub would have been little off, off center i didn't wanted to do that hence it is done so it need not be bang bang per, uh, on that spot but pretty close to that uh, intersections and you would get a good image the next important topic is filling the frame see we all know the peacocks are very beautiful you know but the beauty of understand the beauty like beauty of the peacock would lie in the feathers uh peacock has very dull leg you know when the peacock opens his uh, op i mean they don't have a, as a as beautiful legs as a, a normal pigeon has so when a peacock opens the feather the whole your attention should go on the feather if you if you don't crop it or if you do not zoom enough so that the brownish leg probably the trees behind uh, maybe if there are any vehicles or any other people around you may come in a frame and spoil the frame so so kind of zoom tight and if you want you crop it so the focus or the attention you you draw on the bird itself okay now uh, i mean now i'm kind of contradicting uh, i said uh, chop it but now i'm saying don't chop it the reason behind this Look at this beautiful female leopard. So I mean, this was again a fantastic safari in Kabini, where we saw this uh, mating pair. The male male was a little behind, and this female came into the picture, and she came right in front of our vehicle, and we we took beautiful shots. And I was very happy the way I got this shot. The only I mean, until I came back to the lodge, and when I saw, uh, look at the tail. The tail got chopped, and I didn't realize uh, when I was clicking it. and the leopards have beautiful tail i mean they have a curvy tail and they have a little white spot on on the end of the tail and i i the the interesting part of the leopard i had missed so for me i mean that even if it is a sharp object a uh, sharp subject nicely looking at me a beautiful uh, uh, beautiful lighting condition it doesn't help until uh, i mean i if i want to use it i would have to chop it further or if you want to show the leopard as a full i mean with with that beautiful tail i can't use this photograph have a look at these two birds again I mean, it's the same bird when you see left bird the the tail is chopped you know it it looks kind of incomplete but if you see the bird on the right it it brings the completeness so you are not missing on something in the previous picture i intentionally chopped the the feathers or the legs of the uh, peacock because that was not adding the value but this bird which is uh, as as a long tail uh, it, this is called as rufous tree pie uh, until unless and until you take the bird as a whole you are not giving uh, you are not doing a justice to that bird photograph so think about i mean always look at the corners of your frame before you 
click frame in frame is also an important thing uh, uh, this this leopard was resting on a tree and if you really see the way the tree is it kind of formed a cone so this bark here this bark here the bark at the back and these two barks so it feels like the the leopard is peacefully sleeping in a, in a small cone and looking at the vast savanna which is in front of it so that makes a natural frame and the, and the barks are going up to the top of the frame that is the reason i kept that uh, uh, the subject in the center and had a frame to to give a nice nice uh, that cup thing cup cup kind of a feeling for that uh, animal uh, this was shot in jim corbett national park the animals were approaching us i mean it was a big herd nicely bathed in black uh, nice black elephants uh, it was a winter morning so if you really look at the top of the frame look at those trees you know the way they have done the arch so it kind of gave a nice frame or a canopy for the uh, animal to come in and the and the uh, the winter added that blue foggy light and it it gives a very nice composition when the animal is approaching i mean we would have we would have eliminated it to show the the uh, details of the elephant but it wouldn't have done justice because of the frame and uh, trust me jim corbett national park is one of the finest park uh to click uh, elephants and uh, against these kind of backdrop the scenery is beautiful there the next interesting part is leading lines always look for some lines which is drawing your attention uh this was clicked at uh, nimu village in ladakh so this is basically a confluence of two rivers so the the river on the top which is going to the left uh, going to the right it is is zanskar river and the river coming from the right uh just a second uh, yeah the river coming from the right is uh, uh, coming from the left is indus river or sindhu river so if you see uh, the uh, photograph carefully all the all the peaks of the mountains are converging into this small point at this 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 point and then the, all the leading lines are moving out from that converging point that that gives a that, that gives a travel kind of a feeling uh, to that to that uh, frame and that is the reason the leading lines were captured in this uh, photograph for like i said for any subjects uh, like animals birds or for that matter people always try and focus on uh, the eye if you have the eye in focus uh, even if the body is not in focus it will it looks like a good photograph always try and focus on the eye i mean look at this tiger it was right look i mean i uh, it was looking right in front of our camera we knew that it would uh, create a great, a great frame if we have those eyes sharp so we kind of change our setting and got those sharp eyes i said asymmetry but sometimes symmetry also plays an interesting role uh, this was a tigress in uh, tadawa national park uh, early morning shot the tigress was up to hunting and uh, we were going behind and the tigress was up i mean walking uh, on the road uh, approaching us i mean she was looking for some something to hunt and at 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 one turn she kind of froze and the way she was standing uh, look at her body i mean all the black spots uh, black black lines are you know kind of parallel her whole body was in a particular symmetry so at this juncture you have to decide so a symmetrical shape i mean you hardly see tiger that that still you know and then kind of staring at you so when you get this kind of uh, uh, scene you know that it, it is okay to keep the tiger in the center and shoot because it it brings a nice symmetry into into the frame depth of field is also an interesting subject so when you click a landscape or or any nature a photo a river or any hills you want fr front part till the end part till the cloud everything needs to be in focus if any of this part is not in focus that doesn't give a good frame on the contrary when you click any animals or birds you always need to eliminate what is there in the background so that the the, the nice feeling of uh, creamy background and the whole attention goes on the bird uh, if you ever see uh, any wedding photography uh, or any portraits for that matter if you see on the web they always have that creamy background behind they kind of blur everything behind so the entire attention goes on the on the species you know so that was about some guidelines uh, let's talk about certain essence yeah i mean too many but they are not too many actually if you see them it is pretty easy to comprehend and and uh, uh, you will know what what i mean 
डोंट थिंक अबाउट दैट कि एक स्पेशल जगह पे जाऊंगा और फोटोग्राफ लूंगा आई मीन एवरी प्लेस इज यूनिक दिस इज एन ऑर्डिनरी वाटर बॉडी स्पॉटेड डियर्स आर प्रिटी प्रिटी कॉमन बर्ड्स कॉमन एनिमल्स इन एनी फॉरेस्ट व्हाट मेड दिस स्पेशल फोटोग्राफ स्पेशल इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एवरीथिंग ऑर्डिनरी मेड दिस फोटोग्राफ एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी a nice flow of river ordinary subject ordinary land ordinary tree le- leaning but as the as the spotted deer just bent and started drinking water with that reflection we know that we we had got the best shot so don't wait for the best of sight settings the best of light the best of the bird the best of the animals click just click what you what you think is beautiful you know and don't fancy that i i'll buy, buy a new camera next time i go on a trip and and then only i'll click it have a look at this picture i was on a audit of a tea factory somewhere in assam and though i was giving giving you gyan that you should pre plan i i don't know why but uh, i didn't plan i didn't research more about the location while i was on this trip and uh, it was the second last day of my audit and i asked this uh, the plant manager uh, Uh, how far the kaziranga is i mean it must be very far right he said no boss it's 2 hours drive i said like i was startled like 2 hours are you sure and he said if you want to go i can arrange a, a, arrange a vehicle or and and all the safari passes i said uh, fine and fortunately next day we could finish early so we packed our lunch we had our lunch on the way and then we went in the forest but as i had not done any pre planning i didn't have my wildlife camera the only thing what i had is the basic office camera uh and then we got this beautiful rhino then another rhino with i mean a rhino with a mother and a, a small cub small uh cub uh and i took this picture i mean this if you saw earlier pictures if you compare that picture to this picture this picture is not good if we, i would have had the the wildlife camera i could have blurred the background i would have gone little down and or i would have zoomed it and got better details of this rhino but i didn't have the gear and if i did i wouldn't have clicked this picture on that day trust me it has been 3 years i didn't get a chance to visit kaziranga so if i didn't have this picture then i i did not have i wouldn't have had a picture of uh, rhino uh, indian one or rhino with me so whatever you have in hand be it mobile phone be it basic camera be it professional camera just have it and and uh, just start clicking uh okay no the right setting is also important thing so basically uh, uh, i mean uh, that is a more technical thing but what i want to tell you is see observe the animal see where from where which is going to what side you know this bird was uh, catching a prey this is called as brown headed seagull and, and, and i think that's the mountain i think uh, and it was going to the right am i audible yeah so so the bird was nicely going from the left to right and i knew that particular spot it will take a turn and it opened its its wing fully and that's the point where you got that the fully open uh, uh, wing span and the nice uh, prey in the uh, prey in the beak uh working with light is also important thing uh, quickly i mean this was an afternoon the light was very harsh i tweak some setting and uh, typically when you and we were against the sun typically when you take photographs against the sun uh your object becomes black but uh, you can tweak the exposure and and all smartphone also have that exposure setting so you just need to up it a bit and you get nice ba- white background like a studio studio setting and you get very good details of whatever object you're clicking the name of the bird is uh, crested hawk eagle because it has a crest on its head uh again the same big one thing uh it was end of the day people started packing uh, the light is bad now we will not get birds in action the shutter speed is too low the birds picture hey, Ethan, becomes yes can you hear me yes can you yes, just uh, close the sharing and once again do this one red line which is uh, bothering yeah, us yeah i don't know not from my side but yeah i can do that hi nana so just um, yeah do it once again so it will just vanish is it okay now just here yeah, perfect sorry oh, for this no problem uh, so so, uh, so everyone started packing and the the the, the actually the light started very uh, turning very good you know from from whitish to yellow yellow to orange orange to dark red while everyone was packing i said no i i want this in the in the red color so i i clicked it and yeah i mean it's not a bad frame not a bad frame at all 
isolate what matters uh, flamingo it is always this photograph is good to show that what uh, flamingo herd looks like but if I, or a flamingo flock to be very technical how the flock looks like but if i want to show the beauty of the flamingo so probably you may get distracted by first flamingo second flamingo third flamingo but if i want to really show you what the flaming how the flamingo looks like i need to isolate it or i need to show it as a separate thing you know uh, a simple example is when you go to your uh, uh, kids program uh, maybe an annual function and all the kids are dancing on the stage or anywhere when you when you try and click them in the group you may get a, a, a nice capture of your, your your kid or you may not get it but if you ask him just to step aside or maybe at the corner or if you change your angle you may get a good photograph that's what it is so you have to isolate your subject so that you would get to know how the beak of the bird is how it is standing nicely on one leg uh, how pink it is how 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 the black tip looks like and what is the beauty or how the beautiful the neck of this bird is this bird is called greater flamingo and they usually come uh, to mumbai also in the winters don't just don't take pictures you know always try and convey a story with your picture that helps uh, I, I i name this picture as a as a war of courage and a strength if you see something blur right in the front it's a tiger sitting there and that's a stag so so a male fully grown male male spotted deer is called a stag and these guys were sitting 100 meters apart and surprisingly that that the spotted deer was not at all bothered about the presence of tigers he was peacefully sitting and tigers was i mean many people were busy in clicking the tigers yes i also took a couple of shots of the tiger but for me this frame was appealing you know because the courage what that spotted deer had it's it kind of overpowered the strength of a tiger or the power of a tiger you know so this way i mean try and find some story in your frame so that those those pictures look very appealing uh this is again an interesting photograph from jim Par uh, jim corbett national park the road is called as thandi sadak because because of the dense tree the 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 whole whole section of this this forest is very very cold compared to other parts and i was talking about the leading lines see the way the lines have come from the top of the frame to this so it, so this this uh, female elephant is, is called as matriarch so so the the female elephant who leads the herd uh in elephants all uh, it's it's kind of uh, uh the females always lead the herd so it is called a matria so this was a very old female you know and the, she she started walking from the top i had we have good pictures from of her there but i wanted to click her here and i clicked here and and then i gave this photograph for an exhibition so one of the very senior photographer told me nitin this is a good frame but you should have kept that uh the elephant at the back side so it would have shown a nice path she going to cover so i tried to explain him sir i mean the it's it's the advice is well taken but as she is a very old elephant uh i wanted to show the path or the journey she has taken all along her life and the knowledge she is gathering so she walked from that end to this end and the experience the knowledge what she carries is is behind her or her the entire the 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 bag of experience is behind us and he agreed i mean he agreed to that point he said yes it's a different perspective and and that photograph went for that exhibition so i mean don't follow any i mean yes there are rules but try and try and uh, come out of the rule i mean not all rule will fit in in a in a kind of situation so you have to take a call basis on what what the situation is in front of you this was a uh, uh, indian jackal so jackals are scavengers uh we were we were there in sattal which is in uttarakhand and we were shooting couple of birds and then we were passing and we came across a dump yard so dump yard it was full of plastics and the jackal was scavenging it uh we we stopped there and i know what photograph it is so i i came here and uh, and we kind of uh, just stood behind this plastic dump and clicked the picture if you ask me a uh, plastic dump in a frame it, it's not a good picture but think about if you want to submit this photograph for for a conservational issue or environmental impact issue or man and con man and animal conflict issue or or a uh, plastic day or waste day or zero plastic day this is an absolute uh, this is an absolute good example where you can get this kind of photograph so if you see from an animal perspective this may not be a good photograph but for with a with a special intent or a special cause this can this can be a good photograph 
and trust me whenever there is such kind of exhibition on environment or 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 ecological issues or man animal conflict trust me this is my joker whenever i send this photograph it may not win but it would surely surely qualify to be placed in this exhibition always try and capture emotion story yes and also an emotion have a look at this picture i intentionally kept the mother out of the frame the only thing i wanted to focus on the way the 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 young one was holding the hand of the mother that shows the bond between a mother and the child that's all you wanted to convey look at her hand position one hand is right in front another one is behind so she's kind of giving a nice protection to that baby and the the, the way the hand is being holded or held uh, it shows that the trust between the baby or the, the trust ha the baby has on the mother you know so you don't you i mean look look for something interesting like this so and and it will make your pictures better whenever we see a tiger we always think as a fierce animal apex animal top of the food chain but when you see a tiger and a and a tiny cub uh, a tiger cub along and and when they they we meet so especially when the cats meet uh, they always rub their cheeks against each other that's kind of the way of showing their affection so so uh, we were photographing this and suddenly this cub went close to the mother and look at the soft side of the tiger i mean this is more appealing than than the ferocious side of a tiger you know this this gives a nice impact to the frame and this is a perfect image for a mother's day so think about the frames like again i'm saying think about the frames i mean any frame can be good for any any other any event so you have to pre visualize it and take a photograph going to a high level helps uh this is a day gecko which was shot in uh, amboli in maharashtra which is uh, rainforest of maharashtra it, it rains very heavy there uh, uh the way this photograph was clicked is this way it's the same photograph the stone what you're looking here is this this green stone and the day gecko is a tiny object if i would have held the camera on the top and uh, just shot like uh, from from the top it wouldn't have made a good frame Uh, by the way this is me i i finished my this shot and fortunately the gecko turned to my friend his name is arun and he could also get similar shot so you'll have to really really go i mean to to show you have to express the animal behavior by by way of auction so you will have to change you will have to mold yourself to according to the animal according to the bird in front of you to convey what you want to convey again another example a tiny tiny red crab this is called as gatiana splendida it's a tree crab uh, i wanted to show uh, the strength in his in his claws so the only way to to have this photograph is just sleep next to it and wait for him to kind of open it uh, in front of you and after certain time of wait I, we got that shot what we wanted and eye level applies to all it's not only the tiny animals uh, The, the the monkey what you are seeing is uh, lion tail macaque uh, it is endemic to uh, certain southern parts of india this is a lappet face vulture which was clicked in masai mara again uh, if you see when you if you look at the way they are they are looking into your eye that that kind of a, a game changer when you take a photograph and yes uh, you can get these kind of photos also but i would advise not to try this unless you have an expert snake experts along with you this is a semi venomous snake called malabar pit viper the interesting part of this snake is uh, can you see the nostrils here so the uh, and these large openings so basically the the snake breathes breathes from here but these no, these openings called pits so it sense these are heat sensing pits so the the uh, uh, snake uh, senses heat from here and identifies its prey the the snake has uh, typically a poor i said not very great but because of sensing the heat like a thermal camera it senses the movement around it and captures this spray i was talking about the animal behavior so you know uh, this was uh, a meeting pair of a lion i mean typically cats mate for longer time so if once they start mating the meeting continues for 2 to 3 days they they do it in a shorter interval and do it so the, the pair mated we got good shot Uh, and after some time probably the lioness was bored and but the still the lion still wanted to do what he wanted to do and he came kind of close to her and she was not 
happy so she was agitated or irritated and the lion was not happy because she wasn't uh, letting him do what he wanted to do and that at that perfect moment both of them growl and we got those eight or rather seven teeth because if you notice closely the one one canine of the lion is miss uh, lion is missing so wait for the moment so once you wait for the moment think about that what the animal going to do as you know as they are mating so probably they would come close after some time so wait for that right moment and then take a picture uh kalisa was talking about this bird so it was a plain savanna i mean plain grassland and just the bark of the tree and these birds were playing around it this, these birds are called superb starlings uh the the birds were very I mean, in the bush uh, sorry in the grass and uh, suddenly one bird jumped on the bark then the second then the third then the fourth and the whole flock jumped on and then we knew that i mean that was the time we got this right frame and if you look at closely each bird is looking at different direction and it is a really beautiful photograph and like kalisa was saying this is i mean if you ask me what is your most famous picture so this is it is i mean people know me by this picture so so wait for that moment we knew that as one jump probably the second one and third one would jump and hence we waited otherwise there was no damn thing apart from the bird in this scene it was completely empty grassland uh when you see the bird or animal sitting yes it's a it's a good posture uh, like like it's a great uh, frame of a lion the light is coming behind from behind the lion his mane is golden look at the arch position it kind of shows a power to the or gives a power to the frame but the the i mean what you know lion is for this so when you convey your pictures with an action I, for, for me this picture although you can't see the 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 face of the lion and this is a lioness here but this picture is more appealing than the previous one because you know lions as a hunters and you 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 click them hunting you know so that's that is the way you convey the animal behavior or the speciality of the animal we saw those flamingos standing there but the moment they start flying the red color you know kind of pops out and and the flying flamingos is a much beautiful sight than the standing flamingos are we saw those ganus standing but what you have seen on nat geo uh, or any other uh, uh, animal channel is the way the the ganus or the wildebeest jump in the water the water splashes there is a croc in the water there is all dust so that kind of drama will not be explained by group of standing ganus or standing wildebeest you know at that juncture if you if you if you take if you if you take a pause wait for that very moment when certain certain number of animals are trying to jump and when you when you kind of freeze them mid air you know you you would have got a best frame there at times you have to go very close because your your camera may not permit you know uh, so this is a frog uh, this is the egg of a frog called amboli bush frog typically uh, this frog lay eggs on the underside of a leaf and typically they are into the bunch they they look like uh, they look like a grape bunch uh, but in this instance uh, i don't know probably some of the eggs were eaten by snake or some other predator this was the only egg left and what then what we did is i asked my friend to put the light from the behind so that the whole egg gets lit up and this froglet was inside so the life cycle of this uh, egg uh, the the uh the the frog is about uh, the froglet is about 20 days so this is about mid size and with that with that light thrown from behind uh and look at the look at the brighter light at the stomach and the whole egg is blown up so that that makes i i name whenever i submit this image to anywhere anywhere i name this image as uh, uh uh life life in making and this kind of uh helps me in uh, uh i mean this when when whenever it is a micro photography thing it helps uh, having this photograph showcase at times you have to go very far also uh, i mean sun, i mean those ganus were there we were entering into the for, uh, entering into the savanna and uh, there was a sunrise happening uh, we were not very close if we would have gone very close we would have missed this orange light because sun would have been very high up but then uh, we decided to take Uh, uh kind of a sunrise shot against the ganus and it turned out to be a very good photograph always click responsibly never never create any impact or any any cause any damage to 
any kind of wildlife if if you get that that kind of shots by causing damage to or or trouble to the wildlife that is not worth that's what we believe we have left lot of sightings because people were troubling the animals so always think about that always click responsibly and please 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 shy away from the rinse syndrome uh, does anyone know what is rinse syndrome uh, rinse syndrome is we always think that someone else's shirt is whiter uh you see all those detergent that so, so we always think that his images are better his camera is better if would if i would have had that camera i would have clicked better image but that is not the case always click with whatever you have click for yourself don't click for others uh, i mean people won't remember after some time people won't remember your images but you you would remember your images uh, after some time so always think about it always click for yourself like this uh, it's a beautiful photograph it's just the uh, moon coming up and it is reddish because it's just uh, orangish because it was just popping out and uh, we got a good photographs base very basic gear basic lens you know no 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 fancy lens but then it makes a good photograph whatever with whatever you have so many rules i spoke about you know but uh, uh, you don't have to always follow the rules or you can break the rules have a look at this elephant it was right i mean it was approaching right to our vehicles i didn't keep the elephant at the corner i didn't follow the leading lines i made it black and white uh but then it it helped me in in uh, getting a good perspective of the elephant which is charging towards us same thing about this image uh, it was uh, a group of group of ganus which was approaching me and it was a nice brown field so forget about any rule uh, this look at the symmetry of the animal which is approaching you and just click click it it is it, it makes good good pictures and always remember you don't take images you make them so you you put in efforts and you make the images then it will it will turn out good so this image uh, the bird was preening the, the it was just, it just turned image uh, to turn the head towards the left side and i clicked it and i i named this image as she lost her head when she saw me I, I mean, and and that kind of caption uh, kind of uh, makes an app Uh, caption for for this kind of feature where the bird is not showing its head play with the light i mean rather than clicking a normal giraffe with showing its pattern do a sell out where you only see the border and you still get a good frame this is an interesting image it's an ordinary macaque sitting on a high high point uh so people will say why i mean what is so special so if you look at this this macaque here and the trees on the uh, right uh, left bottom it looks like this guy is a rock star and and these are his audience you know and they are opening his his arm their arms and and uh, kind of uh, applauding whatever he is singing so that makes a beautiful frame and that that leads you uh, for clicking it i quickly touch upon grayscale uh, so if you if you look at the older older pictures older album older photo albums of your parents or any other senior members in the house they have black and white pictures and no matter how the technology has improved uh, you still appear feel that those pictures are more beautiful than the new uh, the the color picture because the black and white pictures have lot of power to uh, uh, i mean it it conveys the emotions very nicely in comparison to the uh, color picture again i mean this is a classic case everything is white and out only the rhino and the uh, grass shown as black and it gives a good frame uh zebras are always black and white so why don't we click them in black and white you know i mean that's that's a kind of a uh def- think about def- think differently about a frame and you click it and you get a good image all right so i mean that in that thing we we finish our first session so i mean probably you would be thinking tk nitin i mean this is all lot of gyan but we are all locked down in our homes so whatever you said is fine but we are not going to get we are not going to get a chance to practice uh what do we do I and mean, what you have in i mean you spent one hour but what you have uh, for us in the session uh so as you are locked down so opportunities are not limited you know you can do wonders with with uh, your smartphone because the smartphone are really really smart these days they at times they can create better images than than the professional camera so the whenever whenever you have a smartphone the opportunities are really unlimited you just have to catch them most of you are cooking right uh, so do you think these kind of images are possible when you cook food and and uh, 
present it yes it is very much possible there is nothing great in this picture a black platform or uh, tilted cup uh, basic food arrangements and the and probably little bit of post processing and the images come out really well you think you can make this kind of picture at your home i will say yes all the thing what you have all the the only thing what you have to do is put your phone on the timer put it down and put it on the ground uh, right next to your sofa and jump from the sofa to the probably uh, ahead of the phone uh, you may need 3 4 5 or 10 just to master it but then you will definitely get this picture at your home also you may not get the trees but yeah the, you can click this kind of frame do you think this this frame uh, you can click okay by the way now for the smartphone photography uh, whatever images what you are seeing is is not are not my images because we have clicked similar images but we have we are doing a certain project so i am not displaying them once the project is published we can we can i can display it in the next session but all these are web examples but it is easy to practice at home so coming back to this this is i mean all of us have the lures you know at home and and just by i mean keeping the model next to it or any member of your ho- uh, of your house next to it and keeping the light coming on the face it is it is easy for i think those lines have come again uh, let me unshare uh, okay yeah fine so so by keeping this uh, uh, the model next to it you can easily uh, click it and the best way i mean you will be you will you will laugh at it but the best place to click this uh, image oh oh me and i think yeah this is better the best way to click this image is uh, your bathrooms you know because those are smaller room those are comparatively a darker room and typically the bathroom windows will have those lures so if you if you kind of uh, do little jugglery and have that sun rays coming inside in your bathroom and, and uh, if you click this image uh, if you if you can get an opportunity to have a image like this you would definitely can get a beautiful image like this perspective matters you know perspective is always matter how mu- how many of us like whenever we want to take a picture just hold the camera uh, perpendicular to our eyesight and click how many of us bend or go on elevation and take pictures look at this image a simple image of a young boy think about the kids whenever you look at your kids when they standing just next to you they always look up so why you want to click on 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 the normal level you know just get your camera on the top and try and click from the top you know you will get an amazing result look at this you you always uh, you have pets at your house uh, you would click a full frame like a like a tiger but if you click from the top you just focus only on the eye and and on the nose and you can get a beautiful image or a different perspective of a, a, a puppy or a dog or for the cat for that matter again a simple image you know the, the photographer had just stood between the buildings and held his camera to the sky and clicked the picture typically smartphones have a uh, two type of zoom i mean all camera have two types of zoom but the smartphone has two types of predominantly optical zoom and digital zoom as the phone sensor is uh, smaller than a professional camera uh, if you zoom digitally inside the inside the uh, phone it won't get a good picture so so what you should do is you should zoom with your feet then you will get a nice image you know try and walk close to the subject to try and play with reflections and lights a small puddle and a reflection of buildings can give you a great image and how and the place where you can click this is on your kitchen platform typically those kitchen platform are black uh, uh, black granite pour some water there keep some smaller object and try and click the reflection maybe a black top of uh, your teapot also would work for these kind of images play with shadows and light if you look at the picture at the right it's just plain sunlight coming from the grill and it gives a beautiful image beautiful perspective to that image this you can click at your home very much uh, typically when you're clicking uh, food uh, use your flash so that kind of vib- gives the vibrance feel but if the light is too much then it may burn so based on the condition uh, you will have to use uh, your flash diligent- diligently this is again a classic case of use of flash uh, this kind of image you can click typically before in your staircases uh, typically at 5ish or 6ish before the lights are switched on so have someone uh, throw some flash on the subject and you click from the opposite side and you get a beautiful composition like this 
you can make your own backgrounds you know uh, you don't have to rely you don't say that uh, my home background is bad you have these two devices I and mean, you have laptop and you have uh, television so you can get amazing uh, pictures i'll tell you one example quickly about it so it was a diwali time and uh, our our team decided to put a diwali selfie so everyone had put up their pictures against the uh, good lighting lanterns and everything and me being lazy i had not put my lanterns or, or the diwali kandil that day so what i did i just googled a picture of uh, uh, diwali kandil on my laptop connected the laptop to the tv screen uh, stood against it took a selfie gave it to the team i mean you can be creative and 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 you can really make good kind of good images so look at this this is a tv screen has that glittery effect you just place your camera in front of it and take a picture it gives a awesome awesome kind of a feeling for the picture this is also again a simple composition uh, basic lighting and a small object a uh, good distance between and it got a nice photograph what do you think the background is used for this picture it's just the kitchen uh, it's aluminum foil which is available in your kitchen now think look at again interesting isn't it you have to play creative when you take uh, when you use your smartphone for example if you're uh, clicking on a bright sunny day if you click through your glares like this it kind of gives a nice sepia feeling to your to your uh, images so you don't have to do much of post processing that that the shade or the goggle itself does the work if you want a rainy effect like this especially your insta for your instagram picture all you have to do is sprinkle some water on your uh, spectacle and click through that you will get this kind of effect have you ever imagined a normal t filter can give you these kind of frames yes it can give you just have to use it smartly a small uh, ordinary plastic bottle if you so this photographer has shot a sunset through it but you i mean if you have a, a gallery or a window from where you can get sunset you can get a similar image uh, through this uh, using this plastic bottle again a effective use of a filter simple use of uh, lightings and you get amazing background see this image so the model is holding those diwali lights Uh, if you look at these spots these are being held by the photographer and these are between the uh, object uh, the subject and the photographer that's why they have become defocused and she, as she is wearing spectacles the reflection has come and little bit of post processing in the in the app and you can get this kind of image this 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 image you can make it at your home uh put a small drop of water on your on your camera lens and it becomes a micro lens and with that stop of water if you start clicking insect you can get get that uh, magnification effect and you would you would see that water what a wonder that small drop of water can create uh put a put a put a cello tape on your uh, camera and color color it with what the color one color single color multiple color you can do it and click through it you will get amazing colored picture uh okay so so i mean i intentionally put this so because now with covid everyone is only thinking about the soap or sanitizers so so typically on online buying platform you see the images like this you know where you have a plain white background the in, the importance of this is when you have plain white background your all focus goes on this whenever you want to sell anything like on on your online platform uh, always try and click these kind of images and you can make it at home just by you know having a white sheet of paper keeping your object on that and take photographs it will come out very beautiful see a simple uh, portrait of a boy against a white background creates a wonder now people will say i don't have a tripod the previous picture uh, was using a tripod you have your tripod just look for some paper cup uh, or some clips and you can support your phone I mean, your phone is very light it can get supported you just have to be creative with the suppose you what you want to create see uh, i mean the drawing drawing uh, clips and the paper clips can create wonder this is the good good family picture right i mean as you are at home you will be you will be clicking lot of lot of lot of pictures of your family uh, this is nice but when you really want to show the bonding click something like this this is this is a very a uh, simple way i mean probably the photographer is just sitting below the belt the father and son duo is jumping mid air and and with with uh, multiple shots you they could, uh, the photographer could freeze it and and create this but this this is most i mean this is a, this is creative than than a ordinary standing portrait you know so try to be creative next time you click the kids click them in action 
and yes there are certain uh, enhancing software which you have to use uh, like uh, and you can you can make your simple image like uh, left side image to the right side image i mean those those softwares can create wonders to image the one uh, software what uh, i typically recommend or i typically use is snapseed it's a free software by google uh, you can use it and enhance your photographs there is another one called prisma photo editor one more called adobe photoshop i mean there are n number of software if you have 4d you can use this 4d as a software and and you can you can make wonders with your food photography and remember one thing google baba is always at your service you just have to put the right keywords in the google uh, or google window to to search or to find out what you want just type in smart photography hacks or tips and tricks for smart smartphone photography and the whole whole world will be open for you trust me i have never attended any any uh, workshop or any photography lessons or no 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 photography coaching uh, whatever i have learned is through youtube some photography magazine following some photographers on facebook and similar platform and learn through them so i mean internet is a it's a huge thing it can open it can it can really really teach you i mean it can go to the minutest level and, and uh, you know you it can make you expert yeah so we can we can open the lines for question i'm sorry if the session stretched little bit uh, apologies for that uh, kale sir uh, we can we can have that hello ah uh, yeah hi nitin uh, anyone who has some questions maybe we can open up for uh, a couple of questions right now uh, nitin will take it uh, you can punch it in the chat box also hi uh, purvesh yeah, sonali yes yeah, sonali go ahead go ahead sorry uh, so i had one question for nitin nitin uh, beautifully explained each and every moment we just enjoyed in this uh, presentation what you have given us uh just just one question i mean i can see um, beautiful pictures i mean to click this picture you must have taken lot of pains and lot of risk so was was there any risk that you know it was like breath taking for you just just wanted to understand any moment for you to share okay if i can tell you okay the picture is not here uh okay uh, so off the record i mean i i shouldn't be saying it but anyway you asked it so we were in a place called uh, uh there is a small forest i would not tell you the name anyway uh so so we were at this place uh, uh, there is a small forest near bandavgarh and we we happened to go there for a safari and we went there our first two three, two three safaris went dry we knew that there is a, there is a tiger sighting happening but for some reason I, we were not getting it and uh, incidentally that first uh, second day evening we met uh, we met uh, the rfo of uh, that forest and uh, he uh, we explained and we told him that we are wildlife photographers we kind of uh, take pictures we give to the platform if we give these to to the web platform then uh, the jungle will become famous more tourists will come he agreed and i and we said uh, we clicked everything but we didn't get tigers and we knew that there are tigers so he said okay yes uh, there are tigers uh, come i'll show you and uh, we went inside the jungle with him on the next day we couldn't get it he said okay this is not allowed but just because you are a photographer and i see see you as uh, um, interesting uh, interested photographer so let's walk so he made us walk okay in the forest and uh, and incidentally there was a mother and two cubs there and uh, we walk 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 we went inside and the chief was parked on the road and we went inside and suddenly we saw a tiger cub sitting so we were just clicking that pictures and after some time uh, uh, we we start hearing whistles you know uh, it's, it's like someone was trying to say something and we didn't understand i mean there was a forest guard who was sitting in the vehicle and we didn't understand why they are saying it and i looked at my left and the tiger cub just passed uh, you know right past us and went ahead. it probably it had came behind us we were absolutely clueless and maybe it is just a 20 20 meter distance it just went past us and sat next to the next to the other cub and that was a that was a moment when we had our heart in the mouth thank you thank you nitin thanks nitin there is one question i think i can't find the name but he is asking about uh, yes sir is there any course for photography 
there see there are a lot of uh, uh, courses happen but i what i would suggest is uh, if you have time yes you can attend uh, i can i can uh, share some details with uh, kali sir but like i said just open youtube take a take a channel of a photographer he must have uploaded n number of videos in series subscribe for it and start from the first session and follow him throughout the last session don't jump on on various videos you know follow him from his first session to the end session you will learn everything and then i mean and then more you should practice whatever he shows you just practice okay so here comes question from your dear friend mr samir saxena is digital camera essential for good photography a very good question samir i mean if you really ask me i say that and this will be a controversial statement uh, uh, i i think what you're saying is film camera and uh, digital camera that's the difference you're talking about so if you ask me the people with digital camera we like we we are not the real photographers the real fun was where people had film cameras because the the fun was to carry those 36 picture ka roll in the field probably 5 6 7 rolls they go in the field understand the light take picture come back home post process it then only you have you realize whether you have taken a good picture or a bad picture if the if you the setting were bad your whole trip is waste and you might have to go in the jungle again to take that picture for us it is easy now you just click it see immediately on the screen you like it keep it you don't like it delete it again again click on next picture so so that way if, if you have film camera please keep on practicing on film camera okay here is one more for you uh, from hetan i am more into clicking the people their attire and attitude some quick tips on it please uh, so if you have a digital camera go for a portrait lens typically 50 mm 80 mm are good lenses uh, try and click at uh, uh, if you try and click in black and white it will re- it will be really good and uh, whenever you go for a session uh, always make them uh, comfortable with your presence first and never take portraits them looking in your camera you always take always click them when when they are into actions you know that will that will that will be more impactful images and uh, uh, the most important part of it is always take a consent before you click them because in many many portrait uh, competitions at uh, national or international level if you submit a photograph and if you do not have a consent of the subject you will not qualify for for that uh, for that competition so always take a consent maybe a small note is also okay but always take a consent uh, so here is another uh, yeah, two yeah. questions together uh, one is that uh, you know if you can recommend any good dslr from your side that people can buy um, and uh, so, uh, so one of the participants has uh, d Three five double zero as a DSLR, can that qualify as a, a good wildlife photography camera? And the second part is any uh, any YouTube channel or any uh, any one that you would recommend to follow on social media for uh, good photography tips. Okay, uh, there is one platform called Digital Photography. so this is uh, so you can subscribe to that and you will get emailers and notification on the new videos uh, of uh, whenever they put okay and there is another one called world of photography that is also good now coming back to the question on camera every camera is good uh, so i'll tell you a key okay whatever your budget is you should only invest 30% of your budget in the ca- in the camera and rest 70% should go in the glass because it is the glass or i mean what when i say glass it means the lens so whatever your budget more, maximum part of the budget should go in the glass so the, the more the more better the glass is the better your yeah. photographs will be so the d5 3500 and a 7200 lens or or a 200 500 lens uh, of nikon that will make wonders for your uh, wildlife photography Yes. Uh, Nitin, there is question from Surjan. Uh, just give me one second. Surjan, 
Sujan, if you are online, can you just uh, ask the question? Yes, yes, Kali sir. Just actually, I want to ask that as uh, Nitin mentioned about the astrology and all to click the pictures of like stars or planets. So, how much uh, pixel lengths can be used if we are going that kind of pictures or something? Any so, 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 so the pixels are on the camera, not on the lens. But if you want to uh, click star, uh, stars or any kind of astrophotography, you need to have a wide, wide angle lens because you need to capture the maximum of the sky. So, what you need is is a clear sky, a tripod, because you don't need to, uh, I mean, a slightest of the shake can disturb the picture because you put your camera on a very slow shutter speed. So a uh, nice tripod, uh, 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 a decent camera body like 3500 Nikon is also fine. And a wide angle lens of having a uh, width as 11 mm or 16 mm, that would suffice, soldier. Thanks, thanks, Nitin. Nitin, my interpreter Ajay is with me and he's asking, uh, do you process your images? Yes, a very good question. Every image needs to be processed, you know, uh, because a uh, camera is not as intelligent as human eye. So you will have to touch your images a little bit to, to, in, to improve the quality or bring out the vibrance. See, camera always see your image as a, it, as, a, as a shade of gray. So if you have something as a brighter camera will try uh, at the brighter background, camera will try to tone it down and balance it. If you have something as a dark background, uh, camera will try to enhance it and make it brighter. So camera is a very dumb instrument. So whatever settings you plug in, camera will click in. But the but the cameras, the, te the technology of the camera has not enhanced so much that uh, it would still give that crispy effect. So yes, uh, a moderate level of processing is always good, but, but uh, uh, refrain from uh, cropping, chopping things or removing an object from a frame or putting an object in the frame. I mean, if there is no tiger in the frame, please don't Photoshop it inside it because that is, that is not good. Because whenever you submit your photographs for, uh, for exhibitions or, or uh, competitions, they will always ask for raw file. And the raw files are typically unedited. So how much beautiful the post-process photograph is, if it's a nature-related photography, and if it is something uh, added into it, which is not there in the frame, that won't be acceptable. Great. So now we'll have a quick round. Uh, which software is good for this, like Pixar? Uh, uh, I would recommend Snapseed. I have personally used it. Uh, it is good for phone processing, for phone images processing. Okay. Then uh, Aruna Singh is asking you among your works, which one is your favorite? My favorite is that birds, that bird sitting on the on the bark. I mean that made me famous. So I think I'm kind of partial to that image. Okay, uh, someone again, I don't know the name. Hi Nitin, I have an old camera named Yashika. Don't know how to operate it. Can you guide me? Uh, sure, <laughs> I mean, we can connect offline. I think, but that Ash Yashika is a film camera with not much settings. So I would suggest if you really want to go for a photography, I mean, that was good, but it is a standard zoom lens and you can't be more creative on that. So if you can buy a DSLR or probably if you can start practicing on smartphones because a lot of smartphones like Samsung and all have interesting settings, probably equal settings that uh, what a smartphone camera has. So uh, yes, we can connect offline and I can guide you. Again, okay, this one is last one from, and it is from me. Uh, it's 8.10 already. So I think. Uh, Nitin, uh, personally, uh, what do you feel? The old age photography was challenging due to, say, positives, negatives, whatever you say, and now the digital era. What do you feel? Which one was challenging? I mean, Kaisab, like I said, uh, the previous one was very challenging because you don't know the result at that moment. So you really have to, and you know what happens is now digital photography is you carry many number of memory cards, you carry... <clears throat> You, and, and then you do a safari, you come back, you wipe out your memory card, probably you transfer your photographs into, into your laptop, wipe, wipe them out, and then, then again, go, go in the field with, with neck, uh, fresh memory card or empty memory card. With the film, you always carry limited, limited roles, you know, because 36 probably, 36 multiplied by 10, multiplied by 20. So you always have those limited shots. If you, if you waste it, then you're gone. So you have to click carefully, cautiously, plus you have to understand the light in a better way 
and click it and then probably rely on your instinct that yes i had clicked a better photograph you then come back process it like i said if it is good good you are safe if it is not you may have to go for one more trip great so thank you so much wonderful session nitin over to you purvesh for close out yeah th uh, thank you so much nitin uh, it was a really wonderful session actually we were looking out for uh, uh, this kind of a session uh, highly informative uh, i we could see a lot of people asking questions and all uh, specifically uh, also personally i did not know that there was so much in uh, there was so much of uh, work involved in wildlife photography so now uh, you can add one more uh, in the in the in the aspirants for wildlife wildlife photography that will be mine thank you so much once again uh, nitin uh, thank you. So for everyone we have uh, nitin's uh, phone number and we have nitin's email id displayed on the screen uh, please feel free to reach out to him in case you have any query my recommendation is that you should email him uh, and whenever he has time maybe he will get back to you on this uh, and uh, if there is something uh, uh, you know you still want to use the phone number please message him first um, uh, about the query and uh, he will surely get back to you on uh, on that uh, thank you nitin once again and uh, highly appreciate your uh, uh, time thank you purvesh thank you and, and purvesh seven request to all the uh, attendees please do uh, post your feedback on the whatsapp group jss whatsapp group so that people are motivated to attend such sessions oh, yeah. please leave the feedback yeah i also i mean i would also love to have the feedback so if if anything needs to be improved in the in the sessions i'll do it i'm sorry i have uh, almost uh, past 30 more i mean 30 more minutes than the given time but i thought uh, i when i took the liberty to go up beyond it uh, so so a special thanks to the entire gss team to raj chatin baba saheb for for this and uh, i've been signing off with this last photograph where uh, this is a friday so i hope you are waiting for your dinner the cheetahs are also having their dinners so <laughs> thank you thank you all good night and take care stay thank home you, thank you all thank you thank, thank you, you very much